Hello everyone and welcome. In this video uh, we'll be covering uh, how to repair the uh, water heater that's uh, not able to uh, light uh, so that it can produce some hot water. I've done a video similar to this but it was a different water heater. It was a Bradford White and this one here is a ream water heater although they both uh, operate in a similar manner they do have some components that are different and this particular one here this ream uh, it'll throw you for a loop uh, if you're not familiar with it at first uh, I wasn't going to uh, put this video out because I felt you know there was quite a few water heater repairs out there on uh, you know water heaters not relighting but one of my colleagues ran into a problem and he had the same water heater and he called me and he said hey man I've done everything I could to uh, get this water heater to working I replaced the uh, pilot assembly the gas control valve nothing uh, and that moment I asked him I said hey what, what, what kind of water heater are you working with and he told me it's a ream and right away I knew uh, the problem and I asked him is there a did you see a glass tubing in the uh, combustion chamber he said, no, I didn't see that. I said, well, you may not have it. Have. It probably, uh, more most likely, it burst, and you'll probably see glass fragments uh, on the uh, bottom of it. But anyway, he was surprised at the fact of that. So I did go over there to uh, give him a hand, and so happened um, the uh, supply house gave him the parts that he needed, but he didn't realize that the little glass tubing that held a little oil in it uh, was the uh, problem and when that little glass tube pops it holds the device in place uh, and once it's popped it releases that device and that device shuts down the water heater and that's only when the uh, water heater is overheated and the uh, burner is starting to burn out wide. Well, anyway, this is what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to remove the uh, cover for the uh, pilot assembly the uh, and the uh, burner. And... The, I guess I was talking at the beginning and you didn't probably didn't notice the uh, star wrench uh, that I'm using and it was a t20 I believe the size that uh, re that's required to remove these uh, screws and ream water heater the, uh, wrench the others use the uh, small little nut drivers and they do make these star wrenches where they're where they do have a handle just like the uh, screwdriver and it's a lot easier to work with but uh, this is pretty handy and I keep all different sizes with this little um, little setup that I have here and one of the first things we want to do once we uh, remove our burner is kind of examine the inside of the uh, combustion chamber we want to make sure that the uh, 
Bustin chamber is uh, clear of uh, debris and dust uh, because if you have uh, quite a bit of dust accumulated it'll uh, cause problems and keep your water heater from lighting uh, because it will remove the uh, oxygen from the air and it'll kind of smother it and of course if you have any flame it's going to need oxygen so we want to keep as much oxygen flowing into the uh, combustion area as we possibly can and in this case the oxygen is coming from up under the bottom of the water heater you can't see it but it is and this water heater here is in the uh, attic I know a lot of you people out there are not familiar with water heaters being in the attic unless you're uh, you do live down south where the temperatures are warm um, there are issues with uh, water heaters being in the attic I mean the idea of having them up there it's pretty good uh, because of the energy that it saves but at the same time uh, if your attic is not vented properly you will have issues because you'll have insufficient air getting into the chambers and this will choke the fan. And like I was saying, the insufficient air in the attic will uh, it will cause the, uh, the flames up underneath to uh, choke out and what I'm doing here is just kind of uh, taking a little pin and there's some little holes and I'm trying to poke the holes um, through the uh, where some of this uh, oil from the uh, little crystal that popped in there just kind of clearing it up and free some of the uh, holes up and below there will be a description or uh, URL to a website explaining um, issues with water heaters in the uh, attic. Uh, I'd recommend you probably check that out if you have a water heater in the attic and you'll you'll have a clearer understanding of water heaters in the attic. Right there, this little device I'm pulling out that I'm moving around. This is the uh, device that holds the small kind of glass crystal that holds the uh, the uh, safety device in place. And again, once that device is the glass is broken from the being overheated. Uh, it will shut the, the water heater down uh, immediately. It's probably one of them. I, I'd say probably best safety device that I've seen that would work so quick. But it do, it will, and it does. It throws a lot of plumbers off because we're used to the uh, a lot of the standard ones where the safety device is um, built in on the side or <coughs> in the gas control valve itself. That little 
switch back there, you can see me pushing down on it. And what I'm doing is putting the uh, safety device back in place. And I'm going to have to squeeze down on that rod back there. And spin it around to where it will lock in place. And now the device will be set and ready for the water heater to operate. And it is kind of tricky, especially when you're uh, working in the attic. And sometimes you don't have a lot of space. People have a lot of stuff around. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of, and and I'm right-handed, and this is, uh, if I was left-handed, it'd be a little easy right now. <laughs> Position this flashlight in the best position so that I can give you the best view that I can give you of the uh, spot where this uh, safety device goes. This is the uh, safety device with the little glass tubing. It looks like a little fuse. There's a closer look. Here's a picture of it. That glass tube holds a little bit of oil. I'm not sure what the substance is. You can see on the previous one where you see uh, this is not the same as the one that I'm working on now, but you can, you've seen the shard glass that was laying out across the uh, deck. Okay, now we've got it in place. This is what it looks like once it's in place. This is a close-up view. This is a picture that I got off the internet. And now it's time to put the uh, burner assembly, the uh, pilot assembly, uh, everything back that goes into the uh, combustion chamber. This right here, oh man, I love this. Uh, this was a great idea that Ring came up with with the uh, gasket seal to uh, install back in place. Uh, I'm going to show you a look. Let me show you more of a closer look where you can see the uh, small little magnets. See the little magnets right there? Okay. So once you flip that over and flip it in place, those magnets will hold it right in place and you don't really worry about it moving around on you. So uh, I thought that was pretty clever. holds it right in place. If you've done water heaters before, uh, you know that sometimes putting this little paper plate back in place can be a little, little difficult, but um, they've made this pretty easy with the uh, magnetic um, uh, gasket. It makes it a lot easier. It holds it in place, so you don't have to fight trying to hold the gasket in place and screw 
the uh, plate down. And, uh, by the way, the uh, camera I was using um, started, my, it ran out of memory, and so now I'm recording the rest of this with my phone, so I apologize if the quality's not there, and right here is where we're connecting the igniter. And this fat tube right here, that's the uh, gas tube. Well, I'm sorry, back to the small copper looking one. This is the uh, thermal coupling that goes into the uh, combustion chamber. And the thermal coupling, the way it works, uh, once you get the uh, small pilot part lit, the burner it burns against the uh, thermal coupling and after a minute or so that small thermal coupling starts to uh, generate a small amount of electricity and that small amount that small current operates that gas control valve and this bigger tubing here is for the uh, main gas line where the main burner all the flames are coming out at This tube, the last tube to go in, this is the tube that goes to the pilot light itself. And it's just a small amount of gas that goes through here to keep the pilot lit.
turning the gas to the water heater on right here. This is the uh, pilot button that we're going to hold down and we're going to hit the uh, ignited switch right here on the uh, right hand side. Uh, and right now I'm holding it down just to kind of uh, get some of the air out of the line and get some gas down into the uh, chamber area uh, because as uh, long as there's air in here it's going to be very difficult to light so we're going to get the air out of here. Now there's going to be a few times that I'm going to cut the light off in the attic, the uh, flashlight, uh, and that's only so that you can see the uh, pallet, the igniter. Uh, it makes it a little easier to uh, light the water heater, at least to me it does. Uh, as you can see the uh, it, when it's lit. but I'm not showing you the uh, spark there you go there's the spark okay We need to give it a little gas. Uh, now that you have seen the igniter ignite, Now you can see the uh, pilot is lit, and if you look real close, well, you can't see it now, but if you look real close, you can see it's burning up against the uh, thermal coupling. And I, you know, I guess I've held this down long enough, and it should be ready to uh, turn on the main burners and start heating the uh, water heater up. And once that gets to going, there we go. We're looking at about 30, 45 minutes for the water to heat up and be ready to be used. I hope you enjoyed the video and hope that it was very helpful. And if you have a Bradford White water heater, I have a video on that also. Again, same operations, different components. Thank you for watching.